Garage fam, welcome to the NASCAR race preview show. The Garage Guys NASCAR race preview show. You are joined, you are blessed by the Garage Guys, by myself, Garage Guy Chase, and Dale Tanhart uh, of Dale Center, uh, a, uh, a phenomenon in the, in the NASCAR betting world. Pro- probably a, uh, a cult. He, he's, he's got a cult. He's a cult leader of Dale. He's a Dale cult. Dale, Dale Tanhart. Hey, Dale. Yeah. Hey, Dale Center was very, very lit last night, actually. Um, and I guess that's a good way to put it with the, the live chat is like the kicker. It's become the kicker with Dale Center. The interaction, the engagement live has made it really, really fun. And that's not something I guess I anticipated when I started Dale Center, but uh, did a good a good preview on cup trucks and even throughout a, a a very detailed prize picks segment as well. So be sure to check that out in the description below and you can check in on Dale center. I still recommend always watching it live, but maybe you can uh, check out the replay and kind of get a taste of what it's all about. You did great, by the way, it was like, I think it was up to YouTube was up to about uh, close to 200 people watching that thing live. Yeah. To get that live is, is awesome. Right. And just gotta keep it, keep it growing and want it more people to be a part of it. Cause it's, I want it to be the most engaging, interactive motorsports betting show in the universe, right? And we did have a we did have a tough week on winners last week. Everybody loves to finish second, um, but most of the time we've had some some big time winners on the show. So hopefully this one uh, that I just did has all winners, and the energy was electric. So be sure to check that out. Absolutely. So so if you uh, we're paying close attention. My video flipped uh, as we were on air. We were live. We were live for us, not for you, but you're watching it anyway. But video flipped. Got a lot of energy. Tim Richmond's dicks out uh, behind No Bonneteer is always here. Got the uh, got got bet board ready to go. I, I would not make a good weather man. Bet board is ready to go um, for for Richmond. I don't know if you can see the eye really there. It doesn't matter. It's there. Uh, it's there. It's there. You can see yeah. it. It's, it's exciting times. We've been we started talking early for those of y'all that caught the uh, the the NASCAR race recap show. Garage Guys NASCAR race recap show. You uh, you heard us give out an early bet talking about Logano and Truex mainly. And I know on Dale Center, if you watched that last night, I'm sure there were a ton. Uh, I hopped in to let everybody uh, know that NASA was uh, was was really watching Joey Logano. They're they're getting worried nervous that it actually is a rocket by the way so that's just i heard it through the grapevine on rocket alert Mm -hmm. they are and then uh i'm really leaning more towards everyone's going to want to murder true x not physically murder him mentally just like pretend like he doesn't exist i feel look i know i i usually have a bad outlook and a bad attitude about Martin Truex, but I actually feel really good about him this weekend. I, I really feel like this is his time to break through. He's had his trials of, of running up front teams made mistakes when it comes to strategy, or he was unable to drive himself back up to the front after being shuffled to the back. Uh, I think this is the time where they break through. There's not a better racetrack for Martin Truex and the number 19 team to break through at. So I already tell you I'm high on Truex and I'm keeping the positive energy. I even deleted his negative unit count off of my off of my picture because I feel good about him. I didn't put him on the wall of Dale, so we're uh, we're feeling good about Martin this weekend. I think I think this weekend is the weekend for Martin Truex. Kyle Martin, roll it up, smoke it. I actually I literally said that yesterday. Like Hi. I was like I fucking lost my shit like going psycho uh, about Martin Truex, and I was like. Uh, by the way, I'm not on drugs. I'm not on cocaine. I'm not on Adderall. I'm just high on Martin Truex Jr. And <laughs> I'm a little tired right now, so the energy is not the same. But nonetheless, the, 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 the bet allocation is the same, and it's on Martin Truex Jr. You can see what my unit allocation is in the description below. You can see both of our Action Network Cup Series bets in the links that say Dale Chase. Check out our cup bets, and you can see ex- our exact unit allocations there, and everything else that we're going to put up ahead of the weekend. But that's all I got right now with with money on is Truex and Logano, the two guys we talked about in the previous show. 
Uh, and we can talk more specifically about those guys. And I got a couple more things that I like that I think I'm going to put money on before we get to practice and qualifying. But uh, I'll let you start on where you're leaning heading into Friday and Saturday. Absolutely. Yeah, it's no it's no surprise that uh, that Joey Logano is going to be, you know, my my outright that I have. He's the only outright that I have as of right now. I can probably go ahead and add him to the board. I think that's fair. Which we got the plus 2000 and I know a lot of people got the plus 2000, but uh, it went away after everybody started hammering it. And I would still take it at plus 15, 1600. That's just real quick. Just some info. I, I still like it down to that odds. Yeah. So that's where I wanted to kind of start with too. Uh, you know, you know me, I'm pretty busy early during the week. I don't really get to check odds as much as like you and Greg may, you know, I usually try to hop on like, so there's, some, there's been some weeks where I've had to like hop on, you know, like today, like when we record usually like Thursday or Friday and for me to be able to, to capture the plus 2000, like I felt like I just went on a hunting trip and like like got an elk or something. It was like the grand elk that was out there in the wind. Now Kevin Harvick was plus two thousand as well, but I just uh, you know Rodney Childers and you know his his refound is is a uh, I guess he's a uh, newly renowned uh, caller of God talks to God again. That was great for him. Uh, I don't know if that was just kind of like a catch up call or if that's like you know he's back on speed dial. But uh, I don't I don't think I believe that he's back on speed. I think that was just kind of a catch up call. I, I don't think that Kevin Harvick's going to be able to uh, to do it two times in a row. Now, it would be pretty incredible if he did. But Joey, on the other hand, has been great at the flat tracks. Uh, that's been one thing that you and I have both talked about. You may be a little more than me when, when you're digging into the statistics of things. It's just next gen Joe or gen, gen seven Joe. Gen seven Joe. I hate the Joe. Th- we are not like I know everybody says next gen, but we're not next gen anymore. We are now officially in the Gen Seven era. So we Gen Seven Joe really is what it is. That. that the whole uh, the whole next gen Joe has to die because there's going to be another gen at some point, and maybe Joe won't like that car. But for this, he, car, he was he would have been next gen Joe between. Uh, November and February, but we are in the generation seven. So I, I think it has to be gen seven, Joe and I like Joey rockets. I like that too. Every, I like the, I like the rocket energy around it. Um, and if you look at Logano and like you said, he's been good at the flatter racetracks, particularly the shorter flatter racetracks, consider that he won the clash. He won a gateway, finished second at Martinsville, had a top five run going at Richmond in the spring before a jack failure relegated all of his track position on the final yellow flag pit stop. Really, really hard to pass here. I expect the same kind of racing when it comes to lack of passing. Um, I don't expect the crazy strategy that we saw to happen two races in a row, which was unprecedented tire strategy, whether you were doing a a three-stop or a two-stop. And that's how Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick won this race, was or finished first and second, I should say due to the way they they allocated their pit stops and they had fresher tires at the end. I've honestly never seen anything like it where the leaders unlapped themselves with 40 laps to go and made up so much time on their t- on the new tires that they were still able to track William Byron and Martin Truex down and pass both of them with like two laps to go. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen, and it was brilliant strategy by their crew chiefs. But as I said – reiterate i don't think we'll see that again because richmond is typically a very predictable race the veterans typically run this racetrack with the exception of alex bowman winning in 2021 here which is something he kind of did a lot it's something he typically does is kind of sneak up and win a few of these races but i, that for I don't Martin, didn't he? i don't i well here first of all bowman i don't think that's going to happen again right i don't think they have they have the raw speed <clears throat> i don't know but with martin truex jr they have had speed here forever. And, you know, I'll wait on Martin. I could get into that now. But when you look at Joey Logano, uh, I'm on him outright. I would take him outright 15 to 1, 16 to 1. And then there's a matchup on Barstool Sportsbook Joey Logano versus Ryan Blaney. He is plus money against Blaney. And I'm sure, I don't know what bookmakers are looking at specifically, but they should at least be 
head to head, even against each other, right? Like they should both be minus 110 or minus 115. The fact that Joey Logano is plus 105 is crazy to me. And when you look at Richmond over the entire course of both of their careers, I'll just use the last 10 races. Joey Logano is nine and one against Ryan Blaney head to head. The one loss was this year, but if Joey Logano didn't have that Jack failure in that final pit stop, he was trending to beat Ryan Blaney as Blaney kind of faded away as the race went on and Logano got better as the race went on. And that's something Joey typically does at these shorter racetracks. He gets better as the race progresses and makes his way towards the front. So when I look at just overall Richmond statistics, and when you consider you throw in Phoenix, throw in New Hampshire, uh, to go with the other shorter style racetracks in 2022. It's been kind of a mixed bag on who's won that head-to-head matchup. But because it's a mixed bag, and then considering the Richmond statistics, this should not be plus money for Joey Logano. Like, that's ridiculous value. This should be head-to-head. Every Both of them are at the same odds, minus 110 or minus 115. So plus 105, Joey Logano over Ryan Blaney in the featured matchup column. On Barcel Sportsbook is a no-brainer bet for me to go with taking Joey Logano outright at twenty to one. Okay, I have something I need to say, uh, but before I say it, though, I just want to say that you better be drinking the Kool Aid. I'm going to drink some of this Kool Aid here. Yeah, I got. I know where my whole can's at. I need. I need to find it. Shout out to Hooters right now. If you get over to Hooters and you download the Hooters app, or you go to order.hooters.com and use promo code garage guys you can save ten dollars on any thirty dollar or more to go order uh, i'm captain carry out and i approve this message it's valid at participating locations for delivery or carry out orders only and if you're listening to this i'm actually holding a hulk hand with hooters on it it's orange with a hooters cup on the inside so just use that for your visual uh if you need to but that's what i'm doing uh, Dine and Dale, I don't know if they allow these on the inside of Hooters. They I'm, sure, destruction. I'm sure they do. It's just a, an absolutely beautiful piece of Hooters merchandise. And it that cup just fits right in there perfectly. And you heard it from Captain Carryout. You can also hear it from Dine and Dale, which is me, yours truly. Go to your local Hooters and tell your waitress about promo code Garage Guys. Just tell your Hooters girl about the promo code Garage Guys, and you can save ten dollars on any dine and order forty dollars or more. It's valid at participating locations, redeemable for food, non-alcoholic beverages, and merchandise. Dine and Dale has you covered. You tell your Hooters girl that Dine and Dale of the Garage Guys sent you there. Have a ball. Got some new menu items, by the way. They're bringing back the uh, shrimp po' boy, I believe. And then uh, I got to look at the other one. But some new menu items coming up in the next month, by the way. And we'll be down at the Hooters in Daytona Beach on the Thursday before the Coke Zero 400 doing our preview show. Uh, and we're definitely going to try them out. So uh, keep an eye out on that. We're going to have some new food to try out. And uh, we all we all know Daytona Beach Hooters is the most fucking legendary place on planet Earth. And we cannot wait to get back over there. but. Yeah, Hooters is the best. And look, when you're when you're with the garage guys, you got to be the best, right? And we oh. complement each other really well. Amen. That was good. And the reason that I wanted to throw that up there is just because I needed to to wet my whistle before speaking on this. The Logano Blaney bet actually makes me very nervous. Like we could have a borderline aspiracy on our hands. I feel like maybe Vegas is taking Blaney here as the favorite and it's possible because a he hasn't won a race yet they they you know obviously he wants to be in the playoffs i think it's between him and truex so it's kind of like really boiling down to like you know everybody thinks truex is going to win this race blaney got the pole here uh earlier in the year finished he led a lot of laps he did lead a lot of laps in that one too so the thing about it is, though, is when you look back at Blaney's record, even, you know, even though we talk about all the time, you don't want to, you know, use things in the past. I feel like there are some tracks where prior experience is important, but he always goes backwards. He has never I don't think he's had one race where he has actually finished ahead of where he started. And that is what is alarming to me is that the bookmakers would make him the favorite over Joey. That is very strange. That also makes me feel like, what if this is rigged? What if Ryan Blaney is going to win this race? If Ryan Blaney wins this race and then everyone loses that bet because it is just so lucrative, 
Like you just think about that. You're like, wow, this is free money. Like, what are they doing? You know, all statistics. I, I just, I just want to finish this up. It's just, go ahead. Go ahead. That is a possible conspiracy because now it really has me thinking like, holy shit. Like what if this is just destiny? What if, he does win this race. What if they find a way to make Ryan win this race? And, it, and if Ryan Blaney wins this race now, and everyone that's listening to this show right now needs to remember this, you need to remember if Ryan Blaney wins this race based off of that matchup alone, that's out there. This was rigged by Vegas and NASCAR. This is Vegas and NASCAR working together. Possibly if Ryan Blaney wins this race and that's all I'm leaving it at that man, the man has not finished a race ahead of where he has started in his entire career at this track. Remember that. That's all I'm saying. So I, I think I do understand why they like, and it's, it's interesting because I preach like, Hey, when you look at data, when you're trying to make inferences on what to use when determining who you want to bet on and why use data from 2022 rather than track history. Like you can use track history, but use data from this season first because this season has been totally different. And what the bookmakers, I think, are looking at is New Hampshire, Richmond, and Phoenix, where Blaney did finish ahead of Joey Logano at all three of those races. Now, Logano was pretty good at Phoenix, got a top 10. Logano was just on the wrong strategy at New Hampshire. But remember, late in that race, Logano was leading and running in the top three, but didn't catch a caution when they needed it. Paul Wolf went out there and gambled, and they ran out of fuel, basically, with two laps to go and had already faded through the field anyway. So... New Hampshire is kind of a mulligan being on the wrong strategy. And then Richmond is already a mulligan considering they had a jack failure when running second. So when you consider the, why they finished where they did uh, on similar style racetracks, it's, it it makes it even more of a no brainer for me to take Logano at this line. And I'm with you. Maybe if Blaney wins, it's an aspiracy because there's a, this track is, if there is a race in 2022 that you can, rely a little bit more on track data history it's richmond because you just look at the track history here and it's run by veterans it's run by joe gibbs it's run by team penske so i think it's important to realize that richmond is typically a very predictable track and even with the crazy strategy we had in the spring it was still won by a very predictable driver in denny hamlin and another very predictable driver finished second in kevin harvick Two guys that have an excellent resume here. Martin Truex finished fourth. Excellent resume, right? So when you look at that and consider that, the veterans showed up, regardless of the perilous, tumultuous season we've seen in 2022 so far. But with that being said, I'll go ahead and just touch on one bet that I like. I have not locked it in yet, but I like Brad Kozlowski for a top 10 at plus 350. I talked about it on Dale Center. I know if you look at his last three results outside the top 10 at Richmond, like 13th, 14th, 13th, um, including earlier this year when he had a better race car than he finished. Brad Keselowski had some really good long run speed. And I talked about this particularly with Grant Enfinger and Johnny Sauter a couple of weeks ago at IRP, and it proved correct. Um, when you don't have speed, short tracks are a good equalizer. And Richmond has been a great track for Brad Keselowski. And what would be a better place for him to get a good run, a strong run, than coming back to a racetrack where he ran really well at and had confidence in 2022 in the spring race? It has been a terrible year for these guys. They have had no speed at the intermediates. Uh, They've had bad luck at Atlanta, couldn't win the Daytona 500. Bad luck at Talladega when Brad Kozlowski made self-inflicted mistakes, I should say, not bad luck. But when you look at Richmond, these guys had a top 10 race car that could have run even better than that, potentially a fringe top five run. So considering that, Brad Kozlowski is plus 350 on DraftKings for a top 10. And I think that's, it's crazy to say this, but it feels kind of like a conservative, somewhat safe bet. I actually think too, considering how bad the year has been for Brad Kozlowski, he has a little bit of momentum. He's got five consecutive top 20 finishes. And for most people, that would be very mediocre. But like I said, when you look at Brad Kozlowski's season, sitting 28th in points, five consecutive top 20s can give a little bit of momentum. I don't know. I think that's something to consider. But the main thing here to see is great track history combined with a fast race car here in the spring. I anticipate that Brad will qualify in the top 15, maybe top 10, and that line will diminish 
come Sunday morning. Yeah, I don't I don't knock the bet at all because I'm I would be a liar if I said that Monday night after, you know, the lines well, Monday or Tuesday night one, when the lines came out, that I didn't look to see where Brad was at for a top ten because it is it's old man's track. Let's be real. The question is, does Matt McCall have it in his balls? Um, you know, you give out the uh, – the you know, we talk about the driver here, right? We talk a lot about the driver, but it really does seem like this comes down to crew chief. It comes down to strategy. It comes down to how it's going to play out. Matt McCall has got to be able to make sure it happened. He finished 13th here, I believe, earlier in the year, correct? That's right. So he finished 13th here. I don't think it's impossible. I'm going to go and look at another crew chief driver combo that I feel like is being abused, overlooked. I feel like this is where Vegas was asleep. Vegas, or or Camby at least, was asleep. Camby was big sleep. Austin Dillon plus 165. 165, guys, plus 165 for a top 10 at Richmond. This is one of his better tracks for top 10s. Five races. Five of the last seven at this track, man has found his way into the top 10. And that's what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at what is the record. We talk about it. Justin Alexander obviously knows something's going on at this track. He knows how to use it, when to use it, when to turn it on. So for me, I like the Brad K. I don't think it's a bad bet at all. I'm just going down probably a little bit lower, plus 165 range. I feel like this is more of, of, of a lock, if not. Um, but uh, we just got a text, just got a text update, lagging unbelievably. I hope I'm not lagging as bad anymore. Wi-Fi is, uh, is, 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 is here and there. Is the, lag, is the lag gone? Are we still lagging? You are frozen as a motherfucker on my screen. I didn't know if you could hear me or not, but you got that that dollar general internet and it's showing. Yeah, we're we're out there. I heard the Austin Dillon bet though, but I don't know if this is how this is gonna work. The beauty it, it's all good You're, because the beauty of it is it's being recorded here. You're coming through clear. I just don't come through good for you. So everyone, everyone here on this end and is listening can hear that i know that for a fact i have tested the theory um i we're, we're going to start using the chat feature dale and i are going to use the chat feature verizon mobile internet does not work well with xfinity grounded internet for normal people um that live in areas where normal internet is okay you know what is normal though austin dylan probably getting the top 10 at plus 165 on Camby. so hope you enjoyed that segment of lag yeah, I um, looking at the data. I mean, he's got three top tens in his last four here. Ran tenth in the spring, um, but he kind of burned me last week when I was high on him at Michigan, which was a track I expected him to run much better at. But he was a he was a big underdog for a reason, and he's going to be a big underdog uh, this weekend too. Not as, and, and this is a bet that I would wait on because Austin Dillon. I always will wait on Austin Dillon because. He qualifies terrible. This team qualifies so bad every single week. If the books see that he, it seems like he may not have speed. He doesn't put up good averages in practice. He qualifies 25th, which is right around the average of his qualifying spot. This line could move up a lot more. So that's, if I could put any input of my own on that and being a guy that's been watching Austin Dillon a lot this year, because he's been very sneaky in a few races, right? Being a guy that's been watching him in those sneaky moments, I always pay attention to how how the, the books value him pre-qualifying, post-qualifying. So keep that in mind when thinking about Austin Dillon. Really good at Martinsville. Top five at Martinsville. Almost, yeah. I mean, had a rocket ship in the long run. So considering that, too, you uh, that was a track that was hard to pass. You realize what we just did, though. Brad Kay and Austin apparently don't like each other too much. After yeah, that's a good point. Hand. So it'd be nice if they, I, I, I don't think there's room for both of them in the top 10. I will say that. I don't think there is head, so. head to head for the ages. What, yeah. Is head to head bet. Do I wonder if Dylan over Brad K. I, I wonder, I'm sure there's like some underground books that are posting that, that are posting that, uh, that head to head, but I haven't seen it anywhere else, but I, it was up. I think it was up last week, maybe the week before they, it's been a popular head to head matchup since they had their, their dispute at, uh, 
New Hampshire. Was that in New Hampshire, I think? It was but, in New Hampshire. Shout out to Beef. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, the, I've got what I've given three bets. Brad K top 10, Logano outright. I would bet that down to 15 to 1, maybe even 14 to 1. And then um, Logano over Ryan Blaney at plus money. My final bets, which I will put out a poll card this weekend. I feel better about the poll. I needed a week off because all my guys kept qualifying second. Recleanse, bring the energy back. Sometimes you got to take a little break when you have struggles like that. The struggles are gone. I uh, feel strong about qualifying bets. I will give out a poll qualifying card tomorrow. Now, um, final bet for the race. Talked about them briefly. I actually talked about them a good bit. Too much. This guy right here, Martin Truex Jr., take him to win, take him top three, take him top five, seven consecutive top five runs, three wins in that span. He should have four wins when you look back at 2017 in the fall. Uh, race went to hell on a late race caution. Truex gets wrecked and Kyle Larson wins. So he should have four wins over the past, like, 12 starts. When you look at, like, the amount of laps this guy has led at Richmond is unbelievable over the past 11 races. Nine out of the last 11 races, he's led at least 80 laps or more. And in like seven of those, he's led over 100 laps in Richmond races. So the data is just insane when you look at how good Martin Truex is at Richmond. I think this is the weekend where Martin breaks through. I really do. And I understand if you don't want to bet him right now, they've been kind of hot and cold in qualifying, even though they've been better at qualifying in the second half of the season. I understand if you don't want to do the plus 500, even maybe the plus 600. I got him at plus 700 when that line opened. Uh, of course, just like Joseph L, that line has diminished a little bit. And now he is the undisputed favorite to win this race. So maybe there's a chance they don't qualify super well. Maybe they kind of don't show their hand in practice and the books look at that and they value someone else who's got way better lap averages in the long run. Maybe you can grab them back at plus 700 after qualifying but you are taking a gamble if you don't want to bet that plus 500, plus 600, because Truex did get the pole at New Hampshire, which is a similar racetrack to use for data, and he led most of that race and should have won. But you know what? I'm not, gonna, I'm, I'm not saying anything bad. Not the much is there for Martin this weekend. Yeah, we've got, got to find a way to get the close. We've got to find a way to close. Uh, th- those are good bets, though. They're not bad bets. I feel like everybody is very – level-headed about Richmond for the most part. Uh, I feel like just from what I've heard you say, and when I say everybody, I mean us. Let's be real here. Um, so, yeah, when I hear you talk about it, you're pretty level-headed. You're, you're decently level-headed on a weekly basis. I'm the one that's not so level-headed half the time. But sometimes if there's a place – Magical bets that just happen. Sweet. If there's a place where you can expect the expected, it is, it's Richmond. I mean, that's – you just look at the track history. If you go back and watch old races – I mean, you'll see that it doesn't it just doesn't what we saw in the spring, which is, I think, just a, a characteristic of Gen 7 was very unpredictable with the tire strategy. Like I said earlier, I've never seen anything like that, where the tires meant so much and we had such uh, green flag runs that were not interrupted, such interrupt uninterrupted green flag runs that Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick were able to unlap themselves and win the race, finish first and second. Like, that is insane to happen over a green flag cycle, especially on a short track. I just don't anticipate we see that kind of thing again. Uh, That is a rarity. That is a rarity that we saw, excellent strategy like that. And I get it. It's always possible because teams are going to do what it takes to get that edge when it is so difficult to pass. But – I don't see anything crazy like that happening. Typically at Richmond, the best car wins. Martin Truex and James Small over the past four years, which uh, Cole Pern was there for, you know, two years ago. But typically these guys bring the best race cars to Richmond and they capitalize on it. And this is the time to capitalize for Martin Truex. And look, I I don't even want to bring the bad energy. I don't because I think he's going to win. But if you – I understand people's hesitance with Martin – If you don't think he's going to win, just hammer the top three. Hammer the top five if you think you're going to get late race heartbreak. I'm telling you that right now as a good alternative. I've considered betting all three. 
like yeah. everything Martin is what I want this weekend. And there's All plenty Martin. of validation as to why. Hey, is it going to rain on Sunday? If it's, if it's going to be a Monday race, Monday, Martin, Monday. Nope. Are- I, I think we're good on the forecast, but it, it can always change. You know, how the weather's fucking crazy, you know? So I don't think it's going to rain though, but yeah. Uh, Mondays are for Martin, right? Yeah. That's what I've always said after that one time that he won at Dover on a Monday, it just rhymed and I liked it. Um, so let's go into, I have two more bets obviously to give out. I just logged another one on the action app as we were doing this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about a matchup that I just found that I think is great. And I probably could have got way better odds on if I would have checked it out earlier. Uh, I'm going to take chase Elliott plus one Oh two over, uh, Chris, the child bell. I'm just writing right now. That's all I'm doing. Me that I'm going to keep talking. Okay. I've seen. Hey, you you gonna talk or yeah. am I talk? I'm just gonna say talk. I like Chase Elliott. He's like he's like plus one thousand on the sports book. He's an outright. Uh, I know that uh, Greg Greg Mathern in the Discord earlier in the week we were talking a lot about that. I like Chase. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and say that I think he's going to uh, to be my my other outright that I'm gonna take. So there's two bets in one: Elliott over Chris Bell plus one hundred two, Chase Elliott to win plus one thousand. Uh, on DraftKings or no Caesars Caesars Sportsbook uh, so there you go those are my four bets uh, it's it's double chase the guy behind you um, yeah he's there looking dude. at you the whole time just pissed off you didn't say one thing about him so there you go talk about I just it. I'm happy I can't I can't make myself take a team Hendrick guy especially outright when they just haven't consistently given the results at Richmond. I know Chase Elliott was pretty fast, like early on in this race, kind of faded and maybe wasn't on the right strategy play like Harvick and Hamlin. Christopher Bell is on that strategy play too. Christopher Bell is really good at Richmond. Like I know there's people on this bet. I feel like I've seen it on Twitter. Like it just pops up in my feed, but Christopher Bell is, is, I mean, we're sleeping on C. Bell, dude. He is a beast at Richmond. You look at his Xfinity Series results, and he's had pretty good cup results here too. So I personally, I just would not ride that bet. Yeah, just can't do it. Can, but I, I get why people think the value is there because Elliott's been more consistent all year, and he did show some speed here in the spring. Yeah, for sure. If you can see my board really good. It says Child Bell. It says Child Bell. a picture Bell. of a kid. I drew a stick figure of a child holding a lollipop or rattle, whichever you you choose, and also a pacifier in his mouth. So there's that. I don't remember. There you go. Picture. I don't remember what happened. Um, so I was driving. Uh, you know, I had I had man things to do that day. I was driving a bus. Hey, I love Hell's Bell, dude. I love Hell's Bell. He's 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 my Hell's Bell. He needs some wrinkles. Like he just needs to reflect his age, dude. Like where where the fuck is the fountain of youth that this fucker is, has found? Like he, he needs, he needs to grow. He needs to grow like some really long, like Ozzy Osbourne style hair. And then yeah. he will complete the, the hell's bell conversion. I would have a lot more respect for him if he did that. And then ate the head of a bat. I probably would really have a lot of respect for him. If I saw him win a race and then eat a bat's head while crazy train was playing in the background, I would love the fuck out of Chris Bell. Maybe yeah. he needs to think about that. The, the eat a bat part is probably uh, a stretch. And honestly, grow, growing the long hair is probably a stretch too, but we can only dream of Hell's Bell in Hell's Bell true form. That would be great. Get him like a black leather trench coat. Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. If he wins a championship, he's got to make it happen. Dude, yeah. Like he has a little like Undertaker for the rest of his life. Like every time he has a race, he has to like bring a coffin around and like come out. <sighs> like, like that's, that is the day that I will respect Christopher Bell. And, and I hope that by some form of life, I feel like we know enough people now that would be able to take this, this part of the show and be able to show it to him. Because I know for a fact he had to see the Joe Rogan one. You know, he'd be cool that way, too. He just came out there just blowing loud all the time. Our, our, our cannabis, blowing cannabis. There you go. Was maybe, we, maybe we can help make something like that happen. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Just, just call our guy. Just call my guy. Have him get with his guy. You know, we'll be all right. Yes, Absolutely. Let's I respect C. Bell. He's a beast. He's a beast, and he could win this weekend. So keep an eye on him. Beast of the playground. All right. So yeah, th- those are the bets. We hope you've enjoyed them. We hope you enjoyed the show. As always, you know, check us out on Action Network. Find us at a Hooters. Uh, go to Hooters yourself. Remember promo code Garage Guys to go orders, dine in orders, all of it. Fine print, 
and uh and that's that's it and that's how we're going to end that uh that part of that plug um i gave a prize pick lock last week i don't think i'm going to do that again for this week just because i haven't really looked at the lines much but i know that you did talk about prize picks on dale center uh yesterday so that's another good reason for you guys to go check out dale center see what dale's doing and uh join the live show what if you want to give a kind of a little brief little little chat about something that you saw in prize picks that you might like yeah, I, did, I covered cups, cup and trucks and did a little mixing and matching, gave two two different lineups that mixed and matched a few of the plays I like. And um, right now, the only thing you can bet on online is NASCAR points, which is like fantasy points, but doesn't include a few of the same elements that would be included in uh, standard fantasy points, right? But nonetheless, there's a lot of others that I like. And talking about the cup side, uh, like Bubba Wallace is under his NASCAR point totals at 31 and a half. It's been a terrible track for Bubba Wallace over the years. Uh, speed doesn't speed. Isn't the only thing that gets you around in Richmond. You got to be able to know how to race this track. You got to be able to know how to save tires. And Bubba Wallace has really struggled here. I think his total is really high. Uh, someone like Eric Jones, who is a good short track racer, their program really struggled here in the spring. And I just don't see them turning it around uh, compared to how they ran earlier this year his total is at 28 and a half i'd take the under there and chase briscoe is a guy who has qualified so well in 2022 and other than phoenix where he won he has basically he, he's lost a lot of place differential like you talked about how blaney's kind of been that guy at richmond in 2022 chase chase briscoe has been a guy that has not had great place differential if you look at all of his results uh, you exclude Phoenix from that, but Chase Briscoe's total is at 26 and a half. I believe take that under because there's potential. We see Chase Briscoe qualify super well. They have a great qualifying program. And then uh, after he qualifies super well, good chance. We see him struggle on Sunday. It hasn't been a great racetrack for him uh, since he joined cup. He did finish 11th here, I think in the spring, but when you look at overall Chase Briscoe in 2022, he's very hot or cold. So take the under there. And then um, I think I had one over that I really liked, and it was Joey Logano at over 35, over 36. I focused more on the overs on the truck side, and you can watch Dale Center to see those. Talk about uh, some guys like Chandler Smith, Matt Craft, and some Stuart Friesen in there too. But I really like the unders on some of these mid-tier guys on prize picks this weekend. So keep an eye on that. See how those lines move around. See what happens in qualifying. But right now, I would take unders on guys like Eric Jones, Chase Briscoe, and Bubba Wallace. I love it. Yeah, NASCAR points are the best. So I'm going to go ahead and move this little device here so you, everybody can kind of see. There's the board. That's what, uh, that's what I'm betting on. And child Bell. Child Bell. Um, Chase Elliott over Child Bell, for sure. I got this new laptop, and it's not wanting to work well with the – oh, shit. Maybe that's a good time to, to sign off. Yep, sign, signing off now. All right, Steve Park F Fan Club, you can join it. All right, see y'all later. We're going to bag this weekend. It's the garage, guys. 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 It's the garage guys, 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 it's the garage guys. It's 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 the garage guys. It's it's the garage guys.